so good to see each of you and a few faces I haven't seen for a long time. Welcome, 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 welcome. Oh, you just, if you're on Zoom, you just miss the beautiful music as Kelsey was playing for us. And Deb and Troy were singing Arise, My Love. That's one of the best parts of the service is the music. And it, that's what I feel like Easter is about, that joy of song, that joy of that resurrection life that within us and to hear those voices just lift us up to a higher space and so i'm glad the ones that's here uh, get to experience that for those that are on zoom if you'd like to come in and join us we have some space here folks and so you're more than welcome most of you've had your shots and can begin to feel free to move around and come and be with us so thank you so much oh what a gorgeous day well this way we break it up, it seems like. I'd like to just keep flowing, but I'd also like to share with you today's daily word. So if you'd like to just close your eyes, I just told you an untruth. This is daily word from 2016. I'll share with you on Easter day. Today is Easter Sunday, a time to celebrate spirit, soul, and body resurrecting as the Christ consciousness of life and wholeness. The gift that Easter gives to humanity is the gift of hope and renewal. Through the Christ presence within us, we can transcend limited thoughts and limited habits. We can allow the healing presence of the spirit to restore and to renew us, renewing us in all things. We can rest in the truth that we are never, never alone. Every day, we are created anew. And this feeling of renewal helps us to live from our own divine self. Let us rethink negative beliefs that we may have taken on and then begin to feel within us that newness of life, begin to feel that Christ presence. Begin to feel that resurrection power and know that you're free, that you're moving from dark doubts and false beliefs into the light of understanding. It is in these times of renewal that we can say, I am radiant and fully alive through the Christ presence within me. I am transformed. I am the resurrection and the life. John eleven twenty five. Our loving creator, we give thanks for this day that we celebrate that resurrection life, that new awareness, that light that's pouring in and through us, the Christ expressing in life itself. As the flowers are blooming, the sun is shining, the clouds are passing away. There's more light in our life now, more awareness that's coming to us. May your Holy Spirit be felt throughout this building, throughout these walls, across the nations and across the land. May we each feel that resurrection power, that newness of life that is awakening within the hearts and minds all over this world. Bring us to that light, your light, dear God, that mankind can begin to see through the darkness of illusion, the darkness of pain and suffering, that we will no longer be bound by the slavery of false beliefs and our fears and doubts. But like Jesus, the Christ has shown us the way, may we too be resurrected in that new power and that new life of the Christ within. Arise, my love, arise. You call forth the Christ in each and every one of us at this day and this time. So the darkness will pass away and behold, all things will be seen anew. Lead us and guide us in all that's said and done. Thank you for the beautiful people that are here, those listening and those all over the world. Thank you, God, for your presence. Amen. Amen. Our friend, Kay Smith, who I went to her funeral last Saturday a week ago, back in 2006, she was at the beach when she was said she was thinking of me and her and she and her family were going to uh, do a little Easter sunrise service 
but it was cloudy that day. But she said, we still stepped out on the balcony. And she said, for some reason, I had my camera with me. And I wanted to take a picture of the sunrise, but you couldn't see it. But she said, I went ahead and I clicked my camera. And she said, I glanced down and lo and behold, there was a perfect cross light just shone through real quick light. Well, over the years, I've kind of misplaced that. I found it again. I stick things in books and don't know where they are. And so this morning I was thinking of Sandra, I mean, uh, Kay and other people that had been passed down. And I started to make a copy of something in my little office. And I looked down and lo and behold, there that, that picture was. I believe the veils are getting closer and closer or being rent. I mean, that was a wonderful surprise. I went in and said, Tony, you won't believe it. You know, when we're not used to seeing things on this dimension, sometimes it's hard to believe. And so I can see what Mary and the others felt when they went to that tomb. It's hard to believe. The stone was rolled away. Jesus' body was not there. He was gone. They thought maybe somebody came during the night and took him away. But yet, he had arisen. He rose up from that grave. How did it happen? No one seemed to know. But they looked in, and there was his grave clothes lying there, the linen cloth that was on him. was he was, it was there. But over to the side, there was another piece of cloth. It was the napkin that they placed over the face of the deceased. But that napkin was not just thrown on top of the other linen cloth. It had neatly been folded and placed aside. Now, what does that have to do with anything? Well, in Jewish tradition, when you're at the dinner table and you start to leave, you just put your napkin down, you get up and leave. And then the servants or whoever's looking after the, uh, the table will come up and clean everything up because that means I'm gone. I'm finished with my meal. But if you fold your napkin and put it back on the table, that means I'm just going for a little while away. But I will return. That was his promise. That's what he told his disciples all along. That I know what I'm going to go through. And I'm going through it for you. I'm going through it for all humanity. And I'm saying, come and follow me. Come into that place where you are resurrected in your consciousness. And you no longer fear death. For death is not here to harm you at all. Death does not exist, but we seem to think it does. We think just because we take off this physical body, but that's the end of us. No, that's just the beginning. There's more. There's another chapter in our life and another chapter in our life. And people didn't realize that. Some did at that time, even this day and time. A lot of us fear death above anything else. That is the highest level of fear is to think you're going to die but now jesus said i am the resurrection i am the life and in you that same life is there and when he went to the cross you know they were going to break his bones they go around to hurry up and get people to die before uh the rising of the next sun they'll go ahead and break their bones it's more painful, or they'll stab them. But when they came to Jesus, he had already passed away, is what they said. He's dead. And they, one of the uh, soldiers took a spear in his side, and blood and water gushed out on the earth. I believe when that blood and water went into the earth, it set up a vibration like this earth has never known before. It put life into the world like it is never known before. And that vibration is still vibrating even now 
and it's getting stronger and stronger and stronger. That we're here at this time where we're being called forth to arise also. Rise up from our pain and suffering. Rise up from our distress, from our separation and our strife and our old ways of being. He taught his disciples and others to pray that the kingdom of God would come and the will of God would be done on earth. And this is the great transformation that's coming about. We're living in the time right now in the age of a new dispensation. Jesus put it into vibrational frequencies when he was there giving that cup of remembrance at that last supper. Breaking that bread of life of which he said, I am the bread of life. Every day, remember this. Every day, remember I was with you. Every day. Do not forget. But how quickly we forget. How quickly his disciples forgot. All those teachings that he gave to us. All the teachings that he gave to the multitudes that followed him. But yet those that would follow him, so many of them were just seeking him for the loaves and fish. And even today, People are seeking the goodness they can get, the gifts they can get from God. And they forget, seek ye first the kingdom, the kingdom. The kingdom has already come. The kingdom is here and now, but it's for us to begin to give it form, to give it reality here on this planet out of the goodness of who you are. For in you lives the Christ and you are a part of that great creation that's coming about. Have we forgotten this planet was given to mankind. It's our gift. And we've just given it over to the lower thought forms. And out of that, we became the creators of this world. You know, when Jesus was standing behind uh, Mary and she was so upset, she was so afraid. And he said, woman, what's going on? Why are you, you crying? She said, someone's taken, taken the Lord, has taken the Christ, has taken the master. And and I don't know where he's at. Can you tell me where he is? And he said, Mary. When she heard her name, she heard her name and she knew Jesus's voice. She knew his voice. She started to run to him and grab his feet and hold on to him. And he said, no, Mary, don't touch me right now. Because I'm here in my spirit body. It's that same body that was seen when he went on the Mount of Transfiguration. Do you know we have a spirit body? Do you know we have a body of light? We have a body within this body. It's clothed with flesh just now, just like Jesus was clothed in flesh. But before he was ever crucified on that Mount of Transfiguration, he was showing his true self in higher form and higher dimension. And there were those with him that saw him and couldn't quite understand it. We're standing at the time right now in 2021 when you can allow that appearance of the Christ in you to be seen. I don't know why that slipped out, but it didn't slip out. It just came out of my mouth. So we are at that place. I do believe that we can begin to live that life of purity and die to the ego self in such a way that the light of the Christ can begin to be seen. And it's not something that you can touch and feel. Yes, it is. You can feel that presence. You can feel that life rising up in you. But it's not something that the human hand can touch. So he said, don't touch me. He said, because what you would do, you're looking to the form. You're looking to the man Jesus that you knew that walked this earth. And this is not what you're seeing now. What you're seeing is the risen Christ, the true self of who I am. And your love for me wants to cling to the old man that was walking the shores of Galilee. I'm a new creature. I'm a new being. She ran back to tell others. He said, go tell my disciples, tell others that I live and I'll come and see them. I will see them and they will see me. So she goes rushing back in town, knocking on the door. And I think one of the disciples came and slammed the door on the face. He, when she said he's risen, so shocked. What is this about? 
So when she came in, she began to tell them, I've seen him. He lives. He is alive and well. There again, just like done this simple card this morning, it was kind of hard to believe. It just showed up. It just showed up. Because I've been in that room and I've been making copies. I did not, wasn't there. I didn't see it. And they couldn't accept that. Then they started talking. Don't you remember what he told us? That he was going away. That he would suffer and die in the physical form. But he would raise on that third day. He would arise early on the third day. What's going on with us right now even? The mind can hardly conceive or can't think of anything except what the, the third dimensional mind can see and feel and taste and touch. But their spiritual essence is now moving through our world, saying it's time for change. It's time for the old to pass away and be old. All things to become new. But first, it has to start in here. It has to start in us. If there's darkness in the world and in our thoughts and in our life, it's because we're living in that dark place. We're living in that dark consciousness. But now feel that light as it fills your body. It fills your heart. It fills you not with division and doubt, but it fills you with oneness of all life. We all are the sons and daughters of God. There are some that don't want to accept the light of who they are. And they let their light diminish because they look for the outer things, the outer blessings of the gold and the silver and the material things of the world. But as you walk in the light and you recognize that all that you ever need, it comes to you. All that you ever need, God already knows what you need, and it is already forgiven. It's for you to get up and receive it and to trust it. Have faith in knowing that all is well. And as your faith grows and grows in your strength and your understanding, your near wisdom, you'll walk by faith. And you'll stop thinking, I have to see something to believe it. But don't beat yourself up if you're in that place. Because even Thomas, one of his disciples, he wasn't there when Jesus came into a room and the disciples were there. I mean, it was a shock to him here again. How can this be, Lord? And he goes back to, don't you remember? Don't you remember I told you these things? Even right now, the time that we're standing in of the great division, like we've never seen it, or I've never seen it like this in my lifetime, and I've been here several years, you know. But to see people being upset because you believe a different thing than I believe, or you like a different food than I like, or you're a different height or shape or color than I am, and for us to break friendships, because of these petty things of the world, it doesn't make sense to me. But it's happening. It's happening. Go back in some of the ancient teachings, and you find it's already been written. All of it's been written. And then it goes to the time this week kept coming up to me. Babylon is falling, is falling, is falling. What's Babylon? Babylon is that consciousness of materiality. It's the consciousness that dwells only in the outer world. And it's also the consciousness that thinks I can get in contact with the divine presence if I read enough, I study enough. If I act like I'm righteous and good, I'll make contact. That was building the Tower of Babel and thinking that what we humans can do in our own self will connect us to the divine presence. Jesus said, the I am is the way, the truth, and the life, and nothing can come unto the Father but by.
by the I am of who I am. And that's talking about the I am presence, the God presence in you. That's how you connect with the divine of knowing, of being, and having all the truth be revealed to you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the spirit that dwells in you. Jesus taught, know you not that you are the temple of the living God. You are the temple of the living God. I have to say it one more time. You are the temple of the living God. God dwells in you and in the stillness or in that walk in the park or that seeing the awe of that beautiful sunrise or sunset or the stars in the sky. Anything can awaken that when you're out in nature or you're in the stillness of peace. And when it does, I think Troy's going to sing, sing a song for us later. When you see the presence, feel the presence of the Christ, you'll never be the same. You will never be the same. But this is the age when the darkness can be seen. Your eyes are being opened. You look to the left and you look to the right. For so many of us, we want to judge the left or we want to judge the right or we want to judge this, that, and the other. It's not for us to judge. It's not for us to dictate. It's not for us to tell another person what to do or what not to do or where to go or where not to go. Oh, my personality didn't like that when that came out. But it's the truth. We are to find freedom in that resurrection power that's within us. And when that freedom is there, it's not that I'm coming against you with anything. It's not that I'm trying to change you in any way. I never have tried to change anybody. I hold a space of love. And in that love, I ask the Christ in you, if there's any changes, that you find that in you. Because when we have changes taking place enough, it is a resurrection above those lower things that we've been doing. I want to be resurrected above criticism. I want to be resurrected above division and strife. I want to be resurrected above judgment. How about you? How about you? How about you? We're standing in a time like no other that power is here and now because we have a choice to make i can love you as christ loved you that's the last thing he was telling them before he goes left that dinner that night at the last supper he said i give you a new commandment love like i love you love others like i love you love them unconditional Love them unconditional. Then whatever's going around and happening to others, that's their choice. What for you is my children. Give up hate. Give up strife. Give up division. And do what I showed you what is the highest calling you can do. What is that? When they were all gathered around talking about, oh, when you set up your kingdom, let me sit beside of you. Let me sit on your left. Let me sit on your right. I want recognition. I want power. I want authority. Oh, please, Lord, give that to me. While they were asking and bickering over things like that, that's a human ego. He was bowing down and washing the feet of those that were there with him. Serving, serving others, serving others. The feet represent that which you have understanding and you stand on. Clearing away those negative thoughts and feelings. It's what's coming to me that that was representing. Help people to understand there are gifts of the spirit that are laying dormant within you and within me. Because we haven't awakened to that light of the Christ that activates it. And when it does, you'll find that you have a purpose right here and right now. Right where you are. That there's something for you to do in this age. Because if it wasn't, you'd already be gone. You've had a good chance this year. Hadn't you? You could have left. There's ways out. 
but you're here to complete your work of recreating yourself and the world, bringing your light and your love and your power of just being, just being. Your stillness can calm others. Your love can bring peace. We have nothing that we need to do to change someone else anymore. I don't if it's a, a drug addict, oh, something different's happened here. We can't change anybody. Can you understand that? Can I understand that? We can say it, give words of encouragement. That's how we serve. We are here to encourage others, to encourage each other along our way. Not to criticize, not to condemn, but to encourage each other along the path. That's what we're here for right now. And in that knowing that it's only the Christ within that does the work. When the person is ready to look for a way out of the darkness, you'll show up. Or someone else will. Because it's the light that comes in into the darkness that brings what? It brings wisdom and understanding. Wisdom and understanding. A higher wisdom and a higher understanding than what you'll ever find in a classroom. Because where you are right now, you've stepped into a higher frequency where the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you into all truth if you're ready to receive it. Are you ready to receive? Are you ready to receive? Are you ready to receive? And it's not by receiving it from an individual so much. It's by receiving it from within. But the person or someone you were meeting, maybe just a stranger and you're talking. And if you learn or come to the place that you can receive, Listen to what somebody else has to say. It may be, sound totally different than what you believe. Mm -mm, I got a sweetness just came over. It's not something that you just, you don't believe. You already know the truth. You already know the truth. Everybody knows the truth. But you've been taught. You've been taught from the time you were an infant. The way you believe is how you've been taught. What your parents, your grandparents, somebody gave you information and you took it as your own truth. When you began to hear truth, truth from the spirit, what happens? You start thinking about it. Don't believe that. No, don't believe that. Don't believe that. Don't get angry at the person. That's just the way to believe. And you could share something, not with anger. But when we can sit in peace and love and maybe just have a conversation of how do you see things different. And that's why I've always loved to meet different people from different cultures, different places, the other side of the world. Go see Bhagavan. Go stay with the day. Go meet with the Dalai Lama. I want to know the religious beliefs of others. Not at all like I've been taught. But what I came to recognize in me is that all truth came from the same source. And you can call it what you may. You can look to Bhagavan. You can look to Krishna. You look, can look to Jesus. You can look to a Z and other names for God or a different form of God. But yet it's the same God that we're all seeking. God by any name is still the creator of all life. And she doesn't care what you call her. Just stretch yourself and just listen. And it will be your own heart that will tell you what's true. 
It will be your heart, not me, not granddaddy, not your neighbor or your aunt or your uncle, unless that truth is really there and it resonates for you. We have been taught, don't think for yourself anymore. Just don't think for yourself. Just line up luckily as sheep. Let's follow the leader everywhere you go. There's somebody always higher than you. Listen to that higher person. Listen to that more educated person. But now Spirit's saying, listen to your heart. Listen to your heart. And in that, the resurrection of the light in you, the Christ in you, will give you wisdom and understanding that your eyes will be open. You can no longer point to any political leadership and say they're the right way and they're the wrong way. There's right and wrong in everything that we do. It's not one person or one group, all bad, all bad or all good. It's learning to come together now in peace and love. Oh, but listen, but that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. It's impossible. It is utterly impossible. Well, you know, my teacher, from the time I was little, let me know all things are possible. All things are possible to them that believe. I believe we're standing in a time right now that we can begin it. Music is playing in the background. <laughs> that. It was beautiful music. Bells going off for Easter. But as we're standing in this time, we have this opportunity of bringing in, ushering in a world darker than we've ever, ever known. A thousand years or more of darkness here on this earth, greater than we've ever known it. Or we can usher in the most beautiful world you could ever conceive of. Because this earth was originally given to us, humankind, spirit and flesh, as paradise. Paradise has never changed. It seems like it's been lost. But it's been lost in our own mind, in our own heart. I believe Babylon has fallen, has fallen, has fallen. And so many people, you're not looking for things any longer. You're looking for the experience of truth and peace and love and harmony. As you walk there, it brings more light and, and joy into your life. Watch as you begin to laugh more. You begin to be excited when you come together again. You can share once again. This will happen to massive groups while others begin to fall aside. But I believe humankind is going to make the decision. It may take a thousand years to really put it into to the vibration it needs to be or it wants to be in. But you know, I know this earth in Romans, I believe it is, it says the whole world moans and groans in pain to be delivered that the sons and daughters of God would deliver them and the newness would spring forth in this earth. That's the kingdom here on earth, folks. And you are the sons and daughters of God that this world has been looking for and waiting for. Jesus said, don't hide your light any longer. Don't hide your peace any longer. Don't hide your joy any longer. Be who you came to be. Arise, my love. Arise. Arise. And go in peace and joy and fear no longer. Fear no longer. Fear no longer. Just think. Jesus stood before Pilate, who we were talking about that last week. And Father said, don't you know I can take your life? Don't you know I can take your life? Jesus said, no. Life is given from God. 
If life is ever to be taken, life would be taken from the Father. A permission to take the body would be given to the Father. Nothing can harm me. He knew that. He knew that. He knew that. Right now, you're going to be facing a great giant in your life. You will follow the gold. You will worship the gold. Or you will be like Daniel. Or you will be like Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. I happened to put up something yesterday. If you want to get the uh, uh, metaphysical Bible dictionary. Because Babylon's been coming up so much for me, I opened it to read about Babylon. And it talked about the consciousness that worshiped gold and silver. And it said, the day will come if you know you're not worshiping that golden idol. Remember where they were bowing down to the golden idol? And uh, if you didn't, you were going to be killed. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, we talked about that not long ago. They were put in a fiery furnace. Well, in the Bible dictionary is reading, it said, when that day comes, that." If you don't bow down to the commercialism of bowing down or falling after the gold and silver, and you don't do it, this is my words now, if you're not uh, following the commercial, it did have commercial in it, commercialism as they're asking you to follow, you will be thrown in the fiery furnace of persecution, of persecution. You know, it feels horrible when somebody's persecuting you and telling you you're wrong, but isn't that what's right, going on right this minute, right here in this time? If you don't believe the way I believe, I'm supposed to run you down and persecute you for it. Tell all my friends, hey, I don't have anything to do with them. You know, whoop, whoop, whoop. and they'll do it to you. All these things have already been written. You can find it in the prophets of old. You can find it through the teachings of Jesus, through Revelation, through the Old Testament. Different things have been left for us. And then those masters or those people that are spiritually filled that bring forth information that have written books and things of that nature, even they've been saying things for ages. That book that I picked up, you know, it's over 100 years old, the Bible Dictionary, some of the things that the billboards wrote. And I believe they were spiritually led, led. But you can find multitudes of things that have been left behind. Here again, it's not that they're teaching you that whatever you pick up and if it resonates to your heart, it was meant to come to you. It was meant to come to you. And then it's for you to say, blah, hogwash, throw it in the trash. Or for you to think about it. Or for me, Everything just about that I'm looking at and picking, picking up to read anymore is answering questions for me about where do I need to be standing? What do I need to be doing? And the main thing is clearing out my own heart and mind, pulling out every weed, every negative fault I can find within me. It's pulling it out so that it won't choke out the light that's tr that is coming and growing within us. That is the separation of the wheat from the tares. It's time that we got to work, folks. It's time for us to clean up our own self and let the light shine through. I'll close by something I've told you many times of going upstairs in an attic where my uncle lived at one time. And it was really dark. And I said, I don't, I'm not going to come up there. It's too dark, Uncle Will. And he said, just a minute, honey. And he lit the old lamp, the old lamp that had a glass around it. He lit it, the lantern. I said, it's still too dark in here. He said, wait a moment. He picked the glass up off of that little lamp, and he washed it. There was soot all in it. And he said, he washed it, dried it, put it back on. Gosh, that hole upstairs just lit up. I could see everything. Just like a bright light came on. And... I'm glad I experienced that because I think of it as we, as individuals, our light's there. Our light's there. But the soot of the things that happened to you during this lifetime, the hurts, the pains, the rejections, the belittling, the criticizing, 
the unkind things that have been done to you, it's built up soot. Where your light can't quite be seen. But as we begin to clear out those negative thoughts, wash that outer thinking, that darkness has been clouding around us since the beginning of time. You will allow that light of who you are to be seen. Your love will be felt. Your kindness. Haven't you passed by someone sometime and just kind of looked at them and that's a good person. That's a good person. And then when you get to know them, you like to be around them because when you're around them, you feel better. Their voice just lifts you up. You feel the kindness from them. That's the light I'm talking about. And I know each and every one of you that are hearing my voice, you hold that light. You have that light in you. You have the goodness in you. So let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Happy Easter.